Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Great. I appreciate it. All right. Wow. What, what a movie. Every time I see the space station, I get excited. Um, and uh, we are, we've been partnering, uh, CASIS, the Center for the Advancement of Science and Space, we've been partnering with uh, IMAX to, to develop the, uh, the content, edu educational content to inspire, using the space station to inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, and explorers. And so we've got content, we've been working with them, and that'll be available here at the festival, and I'll tell you a little bit uh, more about that later. Now, the, the trailer, the actual movie is premiering today, as Josh said, at the uh, Air and Space Museum, the Smithsonian, about maybe 10 or 15 minutes away from here. 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. And the good news is there are free tickets, a bunch of tickets. They're going to be upstairs at the Cases booth, so make sure that you get your tickets. Don't everybody go at once, but there's a bunch of tickets available for the 4 o'clock and the 5 o'clock showings um, for this wonderful IMAX movie. So today we've got an exciting agenda. We have a whole bunch of moving parts, literally moving at 17,500 miles an hour. Um, we're going to bring on stage some stars from Nickelodeon. And uh, they're going to be, we're going to be talking to each other about space, and we're going to be also talking about game shakers, their stardom on Nickelodeon that's inspiring kids their age, 13, 14 year old uh, age uh, frame. And then at 1235, we're going to make a connection to the International Space Station live. You know, the space station is up there. There's six astronauts and cosmonauts living and working on the International Space Station. Um, Jeff Williams is, is the astronaut uh, army uh, officer who's flown in space multiple times. He's been up there for about 28 days. We're going to be talking to him. There's two Tims up there, Tim Peake, the first British astronaut, uh, no kidding, uh, from Britain astronaut, and Tim Copra, as well as three cosmonauts. And so they're living and working in space, and Jeff's taking time out of his busy day to talk to us. The, the, the girls are going to ask him a bunch of questions. We have a student who's going to ask Jeff a question. And then we have social media that's brewing to, to ask questions. So a very busy agenda coming, coming on board, and so I want to keep this thing moving. So um, first of all, who in the audience is 15 years old or younger? All right, you can put your hands down. The space station, we've had continuous human presence on the space station for your entire lives. When I was a kid, when I was your age, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have GPS, it was a different world. And look how we've advanced in, in just three decades or four decades, I'm not telling you my age. But we've advanced and, and we have the same thing uh, uh, looking forward to in, in the future. So the space station has been up there continuously um, uh, uh, manned for 15 years. We finished up assembly about five years ago. Um, probably two, a little over 200 people have, have traveled up the space station. We had a whole bunch of space shuttle missions, and that's where I got kind of involved in assembling the space station. And it is truly a unique platform, a learning platform to better understand science, technology, engineering, um, not only for scientists and solving problems on the, on the ground as well as going off to Mars, but also inspiring, as I said, this next uh, generation of, of astronauts. So with that, I would like to introduce Madison and Cree. So come on up, Madison Shipman, Cree Chikino. Hey! They're stars from Nickelodeon. How's it going? Good seeing you ladies. All right. All right, you traveled all the way out from L.A.? Yes. Wow, how was the trip? <laughs> um, long, but it was a ton of fun, and I'm super excited to be here. I know, this is crazy, you guys. Know, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I saw they had 17 million views on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's impressive. My YouTubes have maybe a, like 1,000 or something like that. <laughs> no. No, we'll have to subscribe Yeah, to we're going to subscribe to you. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> well, um, I'm a dad. I've got three kids, they're all in college, but my daughter's okay. 18, she's not much, oh, right, much right. older than you all. all right. And she was really thrilled when our crew five years ago went to the Big Bang Theory studio. There's a, Mike oh, Massimino has actually been on 
been on the set and, and, and rolled with those guys. But anyway, and I know that my daughter's gonna be excited about me being on the stage with you all. So <laughs> let's get started. So right. what's it like being on, uh, on Game Shakers? What's, what's, what's going on? What's the gig? All right, so let's just start out with like a little topic about Game Shakers. Yes. So Game Shakers is about two girls, Babe and Kenzie, who turn a school project um, into a big worldwide game, and they put it on the App Store, and the name of it is Sky Whale. Uh, basically, that turns into a company that they run with their friends, and it's basically this one big story of their adventures, getting into trouble, getting out of trouble um, with their family. So it's amazing. I mean, I haven't been acting very long, and I've always loved Dan Schneider's shows. Oh my gosh, I know. This is awesome. Like, this has been a childhood dream of mine since I was really little, and it's just awesome to know that the dream has came true at such a, such a young age, and I'm just very happy. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, you're you play the New York part. It's it's Babe, right? Yes. She's kind of a little bit cocky and really smart, yeah, little yeah, bossy. She's, she's a little she's a little clever. She's a little witty. You know, she's got that New York vibe, and I'm from New York, so I can connect with that and sort of bring it up a few notches. So she's really fun to play. And okay, and and you play the the sort of the super smart, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit introverted or Yeah, sort of a little geeky, but I mean, hey, everyone's a geek inside, so I mean, it's pretty awesome. And it's great to have the two different types because, I mean, I do feel that I am geeky at times, but <laughs> it's awesome to know that Kinsey is as well, and I get to be both of those characters. Awesome. So uh, do you know how many people are gonna be here to this, uh, this festival this weekend? A lot, uh, yeah. 300,000, over 300,000. Oh my gosh. That's, so, what yeah. do you, yep. so what do you think about SciFest? I mean, what do you think about something like this and all the... the SciFest is amazing. This is I mean, crazy. It's awesome that all of these kids are coming together just to appreciate what they love and everything, so. I, I think it's great. There's all these interactive programs, teaching yeah. kids, getting them involved in science and technology. It's, it looks really fun. We're gonna have to walk around and see what's going on. <laughs> Okay, and then a final question for you, and I guess you have a couple questions for me. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know. so what can the kids in the audience learn from your Nickelodeon characters? What, uh, are, you, what are you trying to, to inspire them with? Well, in Game Shakers, there's a ton of girl power. I mean, Definitely. normally people think that girls can't do what guys can do, and this show just goes to prove that girls can code, you can show what you love, yeah, I think it's great showing kids how tech and coding can be fun and interactive. Yes. And not only that, two completely different girls can totally work together and support oh, yeah. each other. That's also a great message for girl power, like you said. But mm -hmm. that, that's enough about us. You're the, you're the astronaut. Let's you know, ask you some questions. Let's ask you so, some uh, questions. <laughs> okay. So, you ever flown in space? Yeah. What's, what's that like? What's that like doing okay. that? Okay, <laughs> yeah, so I, I have flown in space. You know, in the range of astronauts, you've got Neil Armstrong on this side, and you have Greg Johnson on this side, so don't get too <laughs> impressed. But I did slide in at the end of the shuttle program. I guess that makes me kind of old, right? Because oh. the space shuttle's now in a museum, right? Well, <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> Not but everyone I, can say they're in a museum. So that's pretty I awesome. Guess, I guess that's true. That's awesome. I guess that's true, along with the uh, Egyptian artifacts and everything else, but that's fine. All right. So you call the space station the coolest place to learn. What exactly can you learn? What can you learn in space? Yeah. Wow, you can learn about microgravity. I mean, when you take gravity out of the equation, it changes biological and physical processes. <laughs> we can study the human body. Uh, the guy I went up to on my last shuttle flight, Mark Kelly, mm -hmm. yes. his twin brother just came back from a year in space. Oh, geez. And so they were studying Scott Kelly's body for that yes. year mm -hmm. and then comparing uh, the changes to Mark Kelly on the ground. So that is a huge experiment that we're going to get information that about. You grow in space. Is that true? You get a little taller. That is true. I'm. Uh, I always wanted to be six foot tall. Yeah. I'm five foot nine, and I grew a couple inches in space. My wife always wanted to be married to a six footer, but I never was because <laughs> then I shrunk right back down to five foot nine when I got to back to the planet. We need well, to go she's, there. she's married to an astronaut, so yeah, that's, that's pretty. You awesome. know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right. Okay. Now, your... just a second. We've got. Three minutes until we're talking to Jeff Williams, so we got to mind our time. All but that's right. good. Yeah, you know, come on, it's coming up. Oh, four minutes. Okay, so we got four, four minutes. minutes. Okay. But just and just so you ladies know, 
he, let's see, he was over the North Atlantic about seven minutes ago. Now I think he's crossing over Europe, okay? And I, I remember, actually, I talked to my daughter and, and, and or my, all my kids and my wife from space, looking out the cupola with a laptop, doing microgravity tricks. But I remember we started in Michigan during that family conference, and we went out over Ireland and then back across the Med and ended up looking at Madagascar at the end of the talk. Whoa, so Jeff's God. probably going to be all the way over the Indian Ocean by the time uh, we talk to him. But anyway. That's awesome. All right, so okay. what's your question? I've got a question. What's your favorite experiment on board the space shuttle? Okay, on the space station. It actually yeah. was aboard the space shuttle when we went up, but we took up the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Can you say that again? Alpha, Alpha Magnetic Mag Spectrometer. The AMS, a really cool experiment. It's a physics experiment. Okay. It's a particle detector where it collects cosmic particles from the universe and helps us better understand about dark matter, Ooh. dark energy, all that cool stuff they talk, That's Sheldon awesome. talks about on Big Bang Theory. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it's collected, it collects like 15 million particles a day, so it's collected like over 50 billion particles. And there's super duper smart people that are learning about the origin of our universe right at this moment. That's wow. Awesome. Is that cool That's or what? That's crazy. Have you ever played any music in space? Ha <laughs> uh, ha, you got queued up on that. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I came from a family of, of musicians. We, we, we love I'm musicians. I'm a musician. Are, are you really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So are you the only one? Are you feeling I'm, bad? I have, I, have a, I have a little bit of music in my family. Just all right, so we all have music. Music is, is wonderful. But anyway, first time I went to space, I didn't realize that there was a keyboard, a hidden keyboard up on the space station. Oh what? And the second time, it was just five years ago, a little bit less than five years ago, I was with Katie Coleman, and she said, hey, I think there's a keyboard up here. And we, it was hidden on the Japanese laboratory. We oh pulled it out, oh and, we, and we put the batteries in and started playing. It had been up there since Carl Waltz was up there way back. Oh my and then God. Chris Hadfield, remember him? Yes. His guitar has been up there for de a decade. Oh and so God. Drew Foistel, who I guess you all have met. Yeah, we met yeah. him. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, gr Drew Fo Foistel grabbed the guitar. I grabbed the keyboard. And, uh, and Katie Coleman, she had a couple flutes up there. <laughs> and uh, we played Brown Eyed Girl and a couple other songs hey, up right, in, in microgravity. Right. Does music sound the same in space? What's that? Does it sound as cool as it does on Earth in space? Oh, I mean, it was pretty cool. I have to admit, though, I'll keep my day job because, uh, <laughs> you know, Brown Eyed Girl has like three chords and, and we, um, and, and anyway, yeah. so now I'm going to have to stop the conversation <laughs> because we're actually right on the time that we're going to talk to Jeff Williams. So Alrighty, I'm going to turn it, it over to NASA. And they're going to set us up with a live feed to the International Space Station. Woo! All right, here we go. Let's do it. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for Woo! the event. Yay! USA Science and Engineering Festival. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Hello, uh, Mission Control. This is the USA Science and Engineering Festival. You're loud and clear. How do you hear me, Capcom? I've got you loud and clear as well. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jeff, we see you floating up there right now, waving to the crowd. Yeah. Oh. All right. So, Jeff. Where are you right at this moment? Where's the space station? We're just heading up over the Atlantic uh, toward Europe. We just passed uh, south of the Bahamas prior uh, to that, right over the Panama Canal. I was out trying to get a picture of the Panama Canal, but as usual, it, w it was uh, pretty cloudy. But the Bahamas look beautiful as always. Oh. Okay, all right, so we, we got a little bit of misinformation. We thought that you had been there about 10 or 15 minutes ago and that you were further along. Is that possible? Uh, well, we crossed Panama about uh, 10 minutes ago, yes. All right. We're heading over the Atlantic Ocean. Toward yeah, Europe. okay, got it. All right, that's great. And you're traveling, what, 17,500 miles an hour? That's right. That's 17,500 oh miles an hour, 90 minutes around the Earth, 16 times a day. That's what does it feel like? 
Okay, now you, you, there's a delay in the communication. Okay. So, all right, so Jeff, I want to introduce you to two Nickelodeon stars, Cree and Madison, and they're going to take over the questions. And so I'm, I'm letting them know there's a little bit of a delay, so we'll pause after we, uh, after we speak. So first question. What do you miss most about Earth? Oh, of course, uh, what I miss the most is my family, uh, being away from my wife and my kids and my daughters-in-law and my grandkids. That's what I miss the most. All right, next question. What have you been working on today? Today was mostly a day off. However, I have been working on an experiment where we're studying the, the uh, effects of weightlessness. On, uh, it's a biology experiment, growing nematodes. Uh, and putting them under an experiment. It's a Japanese experiment, so I've been working with the SCUBA uh, Space Center in Japan uh, today and over the last several days, actually. That's awesome. Where's your favorite place to hang out on the space station? Oh, that's easy. My favorite place to hang out is in the cupola. I call it the window on the world. It's got seven windows. It's the only place on the space station where we can see the entire globe of the Earth. So oh it's a my gosh. Place to hang out. That's awesome. So today is your day off. So what do you like to do for fun when you're not conducting such important experiments? Well, uh, the cupola being my favorite place to hang out, I usually go there with a camera. And it's a camera with a big lens like this. So I love to take pictures of the Earth uh, the Earth is a, is a beautiful place, uh, never-ending variety of uh, weather systems, of landforms, of ocean currents, of uh, light conditions. Uh, so it's a great place to take pictures of, and I, I do that a lot in my free time. Okay, what's your favorite food to eat in space? Well, I've got lots of favorites up here. I like a lot of different kinds of foods, just like I like on Earth. Of course, we don't get fresh food very often, but we did last week get some fresh fruits and vegetables. And uh, when you haven't had those uh, for a while, those become your favorite, or at least among your favorite things. Awesome. What's your advice for some students here who have an interest in being involved in NASA and space? Well, of course, you're there because you have an interest in math and science and engineering and technology, and that's great. If you have an interest uh, and, and that's the, what you want to pursue, I would encourage you to work hard toward that goal. Uh, study hard in school. Uh, find out what doors open before you and, and enter. don't be afraid to enter those doors. And when you're shooting for something, when, you're, when you have a goal out in front of you and you maybe fail, uh, on occasion to, uh, to progress toward that goal, don't give up. Uh, persevere and continue to work hard and, and go through those doors that open before you. All right, so as you know, we're here at the USA Science and Engineering Festival with hundreds of thousands of students who are interested in STEM. Okay, so from your perspective, why is STEM so important? Oh, wow. Well, if you look at the history of civilization, it really, uh, history, uh, civilization really blossomed, really grew with the advent of uh, science and exploration. It's called the age of discovery. And it's really because uh, the, uh, the earth is so observable and we can extract things from the earth that uh, we're able to use science and technology uh, and develop it uh, for the good of humankind. So it has made a huge difference uh, in history uh, for the people on Earth. So it, that's why it's so important to continue that uh, exploration and discovery out of this world uh, that we see around us. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of yeah, course. course. Hey, Jeff, this is Greg here. Um, is it true that you took, on, on a previous space flight, is it true that you took a photograph of an erupting volcano that actually was not known until the moment that that image was sent down? Is that really true? Tell us that story. That's right, that was in May of 2006 and uh, there were only two of us on board, Pavel Vinogradov and I, 
and I was back in the Russian segment. I took a break, went back, and had a conver short conversation with Pavel. I think we had a bag of tea. Uh, we drink tea through a straw. And uh, I was coming back up here in the laboratory module to continue my work. I looked out the window. I saw the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. And I, start, I grabbed the camera, a uh, camera just like this, and I started taking pictures of it. First one island, then the next island, then the next island. And all of a sudden, something didn't look right in that last one. And I went back and reframed the picture, and there was a volcano, brand new eruption. I could see the entire plume. It had just started. Cool. Uh, so I, I was able to take two or three pictures. One orbit later, 90 minutes later, I set the alarm on my watch to be back in the window to take some more pictures and it was done. It had been, uh, uh, the eruption was complete. Uh, my guess is it only lasted 20 minutes or so. I had called Mission Control. They contacted the Alaskan Volcano Observatory. They didn't know about it yet. Um, so, uh, but they did uh, see the data later. Uh, so they, they verified the eruption. They also had some other satellite imagery that verified the eruption. Uh, to my knowledge, to this date, I'm the only one either on or off the planet that happened to see that particular eruption. So it was an exciting day for me personally. That's an wow. awesome story. Thanks, That's Jeff. Crazy. All right, ladies, you, do you have other questions? I, well, uh, well, what is the number one best thing about being in space? Oh, there's lots of nice things to be in space. I talked about the uh, view in the Earth. Of course, you can play with things, uh, doing things, doing experiments in a weightless environment, studying physics, doing physics, practical exercises in a weightless environment is always a lot of fun. All astronauts turn to kids again. We love to play with our food and catch food in our mouth and whatnot. So there's all kinds <laughs> of great things to do in a weightless environment. Is that, uh, is that like a 400 millimeter lens right there? Is that what that, that is? Or is it smaller? W what size is that thing? No, this is a 400 millimeter lens. Uh, here's an 800 millimeter lens with wow. a double around it. It's bigger than the one uh, that what you know of when you were up here, uh, Greg. Um, but we've got a whole variety of lenses. We've got many, many lenses, everything from these big lenses all the way to, uh, to very wide angle lenses uh, to take all of the photography that we're uh, asked to do. And then, of course, all the volunteer photography that we uh, choose to do. All right. Go ahead, ladies. How do you feel whenever you float? Like, what do you feel like? Does it, like, <laughs> how does it feel? Uh, it's difficult to describe. When you first get up here, you feel like everything inside your body starts to float. Your, your, uh, the, the organs inside your abdomen float up. Your shoulders, your arms float up, and you feel like your shoulders, you're shrugging your shoulders continually. Uh, then you get used to it after a while. It takes a few days, and, and then you feel very comfortable. But I would say that it takes about six weeks to fully acclimate. And then you get to a point where there is no really logical up or down anymore. <laughs> you can work in any orientation, and in your mind, you just make anything up or down, uh, dependent upon the task that you're doing. You learn how to how to move around with your feet. You don't need your hands to do it. Right now, I'm I'm hooking my feet in handrails uh, to uh, to uh, just kind of push myself around and catch myself, and uh, so you get very accustomed uh, up here after a period of weeks. Wow. That's so, awesome. Jeff, you first flew on the space shuttle in 2000. Yes, it is now 16 years later. So have you noticed any visual differences on the surface of Earth from your view? That's a great question. <laughs> that is a good question. We hear about that all the time. Frankly, I don't see a whole lot of difference. Now, of course, there's differences in the details. There have been uh, forestry operations, and there have been changes in agriculture. Uh, there have been development in agriculture. There's been uh, fields that, that have left fallow. There have been earthquakes, of course, periodically that have caused damage. Uh, there have been storms that have come through, hurricanes that have come through and caused change. But all in all, I don't see a lot of change. Now, I do see changes over time. Uh, for example, when I first got here a few weeks ago, the entire Sahara Desert in northern Africa and half of Asia the eastern part of Asia was all full of dust storms and very hazy. Jeez. Now it's cleared out again. So Africa is fairly clear and Asia is starting to clear out. Those things pop up every once in a while and then they, they go away. 
I think that's the nor normal cycles of, uh, of weather patterns and, and other phenomena on the Earth. So, okay, two, two more questions, ladies. All right. Two all more right, questions. Right. So, pick your best last question. Okay. So, what's the what does it smell like in the space Great. station? <laughs> like, what does it smell like? <laughs> that's a that's a great question uh, uh, because right now I would say it doesn't smell like anything. It uh, it's a very clean um, atmosphere. However, I will say when I first got here this time, the smell was very familiar to me. The smell of the space station. It's sort of a, a laboratory smell. Oh, I can't okay. quite explain it. It's unique to the space station, but I found it was very strong when I first got on board. But within a couple of days, I acclimated to it, and I can't smell it anymore. And when I asked, when I arrived on board, I asked my crewmates about it, and they said, "Oh, we don't smell anything." So you acclimate to the smells here. But I would say it smells it's sort of like a unique uh, laboratory. Oh, okay, awesome. All right, so last question. <laughs> well, okay, for this round, but we got more after. All right, what is the most amazing thing that you've seen in space? Oh man, there's a long list of amazing things I've seen in space. I talked about that volcano uh, before. I've seen uh, some amazing uh, views of the Bahamas, the reefs. I've seen amazing panoramas of mountain ranges uh, on the horizon or oblique angles or, or uh, seeing places that I live or have lived in the past are always emotionally very good because you, uh, it's exciting to see that. Uh, we saw a rocket launch a couple weeks ago. We saw a rocket launching through space. It was at, it was at night, uh, and it was the progress launching to deliver us cargo. And we saw it way up uh, above the atmosphere all the way till the main engine cut off. That was an amazing event just recently. Wow, that's That's awesome. great. Okay, well, Jeff, we have a huge festival here, and they, they scoured the entire festival for one student. <laughs> One special student. So come up here while, while we're talking about the one special student has a question for you. And enter the stage. Come on up. All right. Woo! Woo! And, and, and yeah. what's your name? What's your name? My name is Rachel. OK, Rachel, nice to meet you. You from around here? I'm from Maryland. OK, oh. very good. Well, this is Jeff Williams. He's live on the space station. So ask your question. Um, what effect does gravity have on your brain when you're weightless? Uh, good question, Rachel. The, uh, being up here does have if impacts on your body. Uh, on your brain, I'm not sure, other than I would say that uh, you have to concentrate a little bit more up here than you do on the ground. We have a couple of theories that, uh, uh, that maybe support that. Our CO2 levels are a little bit higher than they are uh, on the planet, and we think that that has something uh, to do with it. It's sort of a fullness in the head. Uh, but that's that's how I would. I don't know if you know what the effect it has on the brain per se, but it does have an effect that you subjectively feel. Of course, we have other effects. Our muscles and our bones can atrophy, so we exercise every day to to prevent that, so that we can be prepared to come back to Earth and uh, fight the forces of gravity again. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. Let's hear a, an applause for Rachel. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jeff, and to close this all off, we have about four more minutes, and I'm going to give you uh, about a minute to, to give final thoughts here in a few, few minutes, but social media has been buzzing, yes. and we have thousands of questions that have came, ha have bubbled up, but, um, but a couple ones are common themes, and so one of them is, what do you miss most from the Earth, you've been up there, what, 28 days or so? What do you miss most, this mission or maybe other missions? Uh, well, of course, like I said before, uh, or I alluded to it before, one of the things you miss most, of course, is your family. Your family, uh, are they're on the ground. They're waiting for you. We're busy up here. We're busy every day. Um, but they're, you know, and they worry about us a little bit for obvious reasons. This is not a... Um, it has some risk uh, being up here, um, and, and it's like all of us. We all love relationships, so um, family is what I miss the most. 
Okay, and I, and I was the same. And I guess you ladies asked a form of that question already, but it sounds like the whole world wants to ask you that same question. Okay, here's number two. What plants would you, would you like to grow in space? Oh, good question. Well, there's two categories. I would say that one uh, would be a category of plants that are just pleasant to have around, uh, you know, like we have house plants or whatnot. Of course, flowering plants would be great to have up here just to, to uh, spice up the place a little bit. And the other category of plant that I would love to grow up here are plants that you can eat uh, because it would be fresh food, fresh vegetables or fruit. And uh, of course, that's one of the things that we don't get very often up here. Okay, and I see there's another repeat question. So here's the next one. Are there any drones used in space? And they might be talking about satellites too. So can you talk about just unmanned things that move around in space, either on the space station or off the space station? Well, we have an experiment called Spheres where we have these uh, volleyball-sized um, objects and uh, they can be programmed to fly around inside the space station. It's an experiment. We're not using it operationally, so we do have those on board. They've been here on board for many years. Uh, I've executed that experiment all the way back to 2006. Of course, there are many other satellites in orbit around the Earth in different orbits. We don't use them directly. We do use uh, some of them for communication systems, but we don't see them. Uh, we try to uh, um, uh, avoid, actually, objects in space that might uh, come close to uh, colliding with the space station. That's one of the things we worry about, and occasionally we have to uh, change the orbit of the space station just to avoid that. But in general, we don't, uh, we don't see or have direct contact with other satellites in Earth orbit. Okay, and, and uh, you all were involved in an hour of code, right? Yes! Uh, for the, and there are kids that actually code these spheres that Jeff has is yeah, referenced. They yes, code absolutely. from the ground and they have a competition up in space. That's really cool. Okay, Jeff, we only have like 90 seconds left. I'd like to give you about a minute to share anything that we didn't share, share just yet today. So what do you want to tell all the parents, the teachers, and the kids here at SciFest? Well, I just want to applaud your efforts and applaud the, the uh, what you're doing there, you're all coming together to get energized, to uh, to inspire the young people, to inspire, of course, teachers and educators uh, who work day to day, um, uh, uh, transmitting uh, knowledge and the ability to learn, uh, teaching uh, young people how to learn, how to study um, uh, for their future. And of course, your focus is on science, engineering, technology which is great. Uh, we need that in the world. Uh, the world has, uh, civilizations have developed throughout history uh, because of that. Uh, we need good, uh, talented people on this program and other programs related to space exploration and other scientific endeavors on the ground. So I applaud your efforts. I, I encourage you to continue down that path. Uh, find the opportunities that, uh, that you get and, and take advantage of them and, and, and work hard and make a contribution. We believe that uh, contributions made in science, engineering, and technology are, are contributions that don't just uh, benefit the individual but benefit mankind. And it's always better if we can find a way uh, to serve our, our fellow uh, human beings. For you educators out there, I will say my father was a school teacher. He was highly respected. I still get feedback all the time from his former students through the 60s and, and 70s and 80s. Uh, he invested in people's lives his whole life. So I want to uh, thank you and express my gratitude for your dedication and your willingness to dedicate um, uh, to invest in, in the lives of, of young people. Have fun there in the festival as well uh, and uh, make new friends um, and friendships I hope will continue through your lifetimes. Well, Jeff. Woo! Jeff, they're clapping for you here. This is awesome. Thank know you know you're so busy much. up there. I know you're working hard, <laughs> and you took time out of your busy day. On behalf of the entire festival, we want to thank you and your crew for a successful mission and a safe return home. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Woo! Woo! Thank you all. Bye now. Bye. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.
All right. I, I think uh, we're going to, he's probably going to stay uh, floating in front of us. Okay, we've lost connection now with the ISS, but this has been a really exciting time, hasn't it been, yes. ladies? Yes, this has been Absolutely. That's amazing. amazing. Yeah, well, I'd like to thank the organizers of this event here at SciFest. I'd like to make sure everybody remembers that those um, uh, tickets for the IMAX video are available upstairs at the CASIS booth. There's, a, I understand, over 1,000 tickets available for the 4 o'clock and the 5 o'clock showings. I want to thank the parents for bringing your kids. I want to thank, thank the teachers for changing the world one kid at a time. And ladies, I want to leave you with three thoughts. Okay. First is, focus on your dreams. These ladies are successful. <laughs> They've had a wonderful career at age 13 and 14. Yeah. But any one of you out there can follow your dreams. It doesn't matter where you're from, what kind of family, what country, what culture. There are opportunities today that, to follow your dreams. Secondly, the space station is a learning platform. We learn about science. We learn about technology. We can learn about volcanoes in our Earth. But each of you out there can use the space station. We launched the um, Space Station Explorers website today, and there are things for teachers. There's curriculum. There's ideas. There's uh, focus on the projects that we're doing up on the space station. So whatever you love, the space station has things to learn. And finally, you all are the ones that are going to go to Mars, your generation. <laughs> you guys are going to drive electric cars. You all are going to do things that we never even thought about. <laughs> so I challenge each one of you, all of you in your generation, you're going to be leading us to space. We're just scratching the surface. And so there are many, many interesting things to come. So get energized, get inspired by space. And with that, thank you everyone for coming out. This thank will you conclude so much. the event.